But one of the other great things with, with YouTube as a platform that if you're going to make uh, that level of production content uh, is that you can show behind the scenes as well. You can take people, people want to be taken on that journey, right? Now. And that's really the thing about That's the really thing about on YouTube is that you guys have followed a lot of you followed our story from when we started just by you know YouTube coverage. They keep saying it's really interesting. Um, so you guys have followed our story where we would like to know each other improve our filming content and um, change what we do a little bit. I think it's important to like I was on the scenes of the run you know, like to show people to teach people because we made a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, and that's a good thing about YouTube is you can share that, you can't do that. I, th I think it's interesting with high production values that the, the, the stuff that seems to do, do best is when you hand someone that you've seen like their journey, like, like I think it feels great to people. And that's, and that's been an interesting thing with YouTube, and Netflix and something like that. And like, with Netflix you'd expect them to be high quality from the off, whereas actually when a lot of the time when production companies just make stuff that YouTube no one can watch it, they can't connect with it. They're, who I admire hugely, but I at the moment are quite uh, so need to not to get old videos because we're like filmmakers now and there's an embarrassed of, of sort of vloggy stuff they did a couple of years ago, which I can totally understand, but I think it's kind of a shame because I like to, um, as others have said, I like to see that journey, I like to see where they've come no. from. So long as you have those, what's inherently beautiful about YouTube, which is that connection with the creator, the fact that the viewers entertaining it, the fact that it's relatable, and all of those things can come through, even if the video is high quality, right? I think one of the risks is a lot of uh, YouTube creators measure their success by how many views the video has got, which is a massive mistake, because we have videos eating since the three years ago that have five million views, and then our news series uh, India has a million views, and it's no less successful, um, I guess it's more successful than people can. Um, and so I think it's important to say that you measure videos by that, it should be measured by engagement. And even if you have you know, like 20,000 views, if those are really engaged viewers and they love that content, uh, then that's so much better than a few million people who are just passively watching that. Yeah. Where will this higher production content go? Maybe on a different website, will it be online, will it not be online? Or what does the future look like? And I'm going to ask Ben to predict that. Um. Uh, I was going to talk about Camp Dakota. Have you guys seen Camp Dakota? Yeah. 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 That's, that's quite an interesting model that Grace Helbig is also doing. So there's um, Hannah Hart and Grace Helbig made a film recently. And they were quite clever. It was on its own website, Camp Dakota. You could download it for five or ten pounds. And that was quite an interesting model. And they built up to it on their YouTube channel. They told people about it. They showed some of the scenes in the trailer. But they didn't choose to upload the overall film to YouTube. And I think it's quite a good use of the platform, you know, they, can, they were able to bring their fan base along on that journey and give them a place to go to consume it, but they didn't risk ever getting really angry because it was now along on YouTube. And they were able to monetize it as well by doing it, so people pay for it, it. Which, which is, is quite, quite an interesting way to show YouTube. I, I was going to say, I think that the future of online video is probably higher production stuff, but that's not necessarily on YouTube. Um, could, I, I suspect that probably if we're sat here in sort of 10 years' time, that there will be an alternative to YouTube where there is higher production stuff, and YouTube will be, by and large, shorter, more um, uh, sort of, uh, disposable kind of content, uh, which I think would, would be a, a shame in a way, because as, as people have said, I think it's nice that you can go on YouTube and you can watch, you know, Charlie short film, and then you can see in the sidebar you can also watch a video of him eating cereal. Um, <laughs> which I think probably actually got as many views as it did because people, I think people, I, the audiences are smart. I think, I think people watch that because it's, it's, it was a video that was clearly trying to say something. It actually had a more powerful message than many videos. It wasn't just Charlie eating cereal for 10 minutes, although as it was, it was him making a point about art and how we consume it and what we'll stick with, wasn't it? Or was it just you eating cereal? It was art. It was art. Installation.
And that can be in any medium as well. I've really enjoyed watching over the last sort of nine months, year, a lot of bloggers starting to do away with the jump cut. Uh, oh. Are you remembering your own name? Yes. Um, yeah, lot, lots of lots of bloggers are starting to try and do some ten-minute continuous takes, uh, which is really difficult to do. And I tried doing that a bit with becoming YouTube, where instead of just jump cutting, jump cutting, jump cutting, which always used to be the language of YouTube, doing something just a bit more ambitious and a bit more impressive, you can continue to be engaging and, and remember your lines like a, a, a seven-minute piece of camera in one take. Uh, then that's more ambitious. Some of the things you might want to say and, 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 and being a bit more controversial, pushing a few boundaries and making videos about taboos um, can also count as, as you know, upping mm. the ambition of your content. I think for me it's about doing all of those things that you were talking about, but also doing them gradually. Like, because and then there's a fine line between sort of like pushing yourself to do something that you don't feel quite ready to do and pushing yourself sort of like, like too far, and it's just like the product is so ambitious that for me, it's always been a case of just like trying to find like a new filmmaking technique of some sort and just like trying to see if I can include that into the kind of content I was already making. Uh, just like seeing, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm this, like, I made a video uh, years ago of the Charlie or a sort of like a parallel universe dimension version of myself who was evil. And I tried to tell like a little story between me and, and evil Charlie. And it was sort of all based in like, you know, the normal Charlie. Camera, but it was, you know, a little narrative. It was like me making like a tiny little short film just to sort of test that out, see if I could do it. And then after I was like, okay, I'm, I've done that now, what's the next thing I can try and teach myself? And then after I felt like I had learned enough from was doing that, then I was like, okay, now I'm ready to try a proper short film and see, see how that works. But even then, it was like, I'm going to film it in my house with like people I know um, and just try and keep it as simple as I possibly could before that thing. Like, this possibly, like, this is going to be the most, like, teacher point I'm going to make, but it's just, I mean, all filming yeah. is experimentation, and that is, like, genuinely a thing to remember about how cliche it sounds. Like, before I did Project Library, I'd done a few things that were, like, five minutes long, that I'd done an action video before I did Project Library, and a bunch of mistakes from that, rather than being higher recorded. I know someone who can teach you how to fly. Uh, so like things, things like that. But, but it's funny because these things all sound obvious, but the fact of the matter is you don't know. Not until you've done them. You know, like uh, quality of scripting. That's like a big thing that I've taken away from from Project Library. You know, having that work with Ben. And then, um, I think you know the quality of before I'm even happy to even start doing pre-production on anything. Now I, I spend a lot more time on the script and making sure that you know the script itself reads nicely. You know, like one of those things. Like, the way to do it is just by doing lots of it, and, and every time I do it, I'm going to focus on a different aspect of it to improve it, but everything's going to turn out. Project Library is perfect. Jesus, it's just nice to do it. Don't tell them that. <laughs> they don't, oh, they don't know. Oh, they don't know. They're going to realize it's not perfect now. Yeah, but that's, but that's exactly it. You, know, you look back at everything you've done, and you, know, and you can be proud of it. That's the other thing. Like, like That sounds a bit scary because it sounds like you're going to look at everything and not be happy, but that's not true. I think everything that you make you need to be looking at it and then saying, I'm not happy with this. Yeah. Like if you get to a point where you're looking at something you made and being like, this is perfect, then you're done. Like you 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 can't you're not going to improve anymore. And I always want to be looking at it and making it be like, okay, what can I do to improve next time? Yeah, I think as Charlie said, we all um, have all been kind of trying to transition to really full bloggers or Really amateur filmmakers to more serious filmmakers on screen, and doing that, you have to not be afraid to experiment and make mistakes. Um, but I also think there's like conventionally in YouTube, I've always felt I've always felt guilty to take more time planning and writing a piece of content. Like I guess traditionally YouTube feels like it should be more spontaneous. You sit down and you talk, which is great. There's a beauty to that. But I also say if you want to get five pieces of content, don't be afraid. As Tim said, to spend more time on the script, spend more time planning. Um, and the other is that I always felt like it was cheating to work with other people in my videos, to have anyone do any other aspect of it, editing, sound, but the reality is there's no way, film is a collaborative, uh, a collaborative process, and there's no way that you can be good at sound, video, um, 
visuals, music, everything. There's just no way. So don't be afraid to use Twitter um, to reach out to people who do specialise in those areas and work together. I think that's our big foundation on, on uh, the British. <laughs> Any credit for a lot of the like jazzy editing bits because that's just not my speciality. And you learn a lot as well about a lot of people. So kind of conjecture, so it's like no good bad ass. Yes. And crowdfunding is a great way to bring your audience along on that. So Freddy Wong did it very well with Video Game High School. His audience funded that series, three of them, three of them, which means they come along on that journey and they feel part of what he's making. And similarly from the original run, a lot of you guys donated to the cause we were trying to raise money for, which means became part of the story as we went along and helped support what we were doing. I know we've been pushing this, this sort of journey idea, but, but it is actually, it's, it's very true, like, like something that is unique about YouTube, I'd argue, is that partially because your audience often have grown up with you, whether that's a million people or whether that's a hundred people, if they've been there for a while, I find that YouTube audiences are very generous and, like, they're, they're, they're happy for you to make some mistakes and they're sort of supportive, you know, there's, uh, there's this idea that, that comment section is a horrible, mean place, but it isn't, it really isn't, like, like especially from my point of view, it's always been my audience and being like, awesome, yeah, do more stuff like this, I like stuff like this, this could have been better, but, but it's never hardly ever malicious, you know, other than, like, the occasional game, <laughs> and it's like, alright, uh, but that's, that's about it, you know, like, that, like, that's, <laughs> that's genuinely the extent of how abusive it gets for, for a lot of creators, so I think, you know, genuinely, like, you've got a group of people who want to see you group and they want to grow with you, like, I, I always feel a, a weird sort of pride when I've been with a YouTuber when, when, when they have like a thousand subscribers and now they've got like half a million and I'm like, is there a meaning? Yep, that was me. I, I did this. <laughs> like, like, that's, that's, that's part of the, the lovely thing about YouTube is you, you do feel connected and it's supportive. Right? I think it's necessary for someone to do it. I did it, but I feel like I've learned the most mm. making films to people who have had that sort of more traditional education. Um, so, yeah. just, just to establish, has anyone studied film or cameras? Yeah. Kim has. Uh, my, my kind of point to that would actually be, um, I, I didn't find a course that I did particularly great, but when I was at, at university I found just, it was a place where I had lots of like-minded people, and I kind of, all the best stuff I did, like, all, all the stuff specific to cameras I just learned on the internet or read books, and, and then I got to put that into practice just by kind of, meeting up with other like-minded people and doing lots of projects outside of university. The reason I initially got out, got into to YouTube um, after I graduated was because I sort of missed that and I went, I want to find another group of people who just want to make stuff, like-minded people who want to make stuff. And so actually sort of going into YouTube was, was the kind of closest and best thing after that. So um, I would say it, it, it's good that it's not, I, I don't think you have to do that, I think. As long as you're, you're motivated enough to teach yourself and you can find like other people you can make stuff with, I think that's fine. Yeah, I did two months or three months of a film and television course, which I do, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, but, you know, if you want to go there, if you're interested in it, then, then why not? But don't feel limited to something you can't go. You know, it's not the only option, because I think a lot of guys here through. And I'm actually often people I've worked with who have taken off an alternative route tend to be a little bit more interested actually have interesting ideas they think outside the box. So yeah, definitely don't feel like it's necessary.